Hello and welcome back to the Make Soul Shop here where we make Hestai products. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy uh, 2021. Forgot what year it was. Uh, we're going to start out with our first video of the year and the first video we want to make this year is going to be a demonstration type video where we're going to demonstrate how we make this exact shirt that I'm wearing that I made for myself. So quickly to tell you about the shirt before we take you to the overhead view and start the demo. It is a double X because I am a large person. <laughs> and so we will be using our, I'm gonna step to it and grab it. We'll be using our Maximus uh, t-shirt guide for this. And we made this shirt out of Sizer Flock. Um, you'll hear me talk about Sizer Flock in the video a lot because I really love the way it feels. I love the texture. I love it. It makes for a beautiful shirt and I love how it lays and weighs on the shirt. So we're going to try to do more videos like this as we go on in the year. I don't really script these things. I'm not really good at <laughs> making these videos. Hopefully I'm going to get better. Um, but really I'm just trying to bring some information to you and share with you. Hopefully we can do some feedback, ask me any questions, Tell me where you think I messed up and where I can improve and we can work as a community together because that's really my whole purpose in this, to bring some of the products that we create here for our students and bring it back to the crafting community and just work together because the more we work together, the better we, we're going to become. So after all of that little spiel and speech, I'm going to take you to overhead view. We will start the demo where we're going to make this beautiful flock Star Trek, which I'm a, a Star Trekky um, freak. Um, we're going to make this shirt today with you. Coming right up. We're here at the uh, overhead video, and I'm going to try to lay things out in front of me so you can see them. Um, we have our Gildan shirt. This is a double XL. So since we are doing a double XL, we're going to use our Maximus T-shirt guide, the big, beautiful one, the extra thick one. We'll be using our uh, Cool Touch because Flock is a cool peel. So we will be cooling the HTV down. We have our already weeded design that will look, I don't know if this is picking this up on the video, but it'll look like this because it's hard to see. Black Flock leaves a lot of stuff on the, the uh, paper film behind it, which is, actually okay, but it's hard to see through the video, but that's what our um, final product will look like. We'll be using some Teflon paper just to keep um, something between the press and our shirt, to keep the press clean, to keep the shirt clean. And that's what we use this Teflon paper for. And of course, we will be using our Easy Press. And I'm gonna cut on our Easy Press here for us now. I am taking that up to 150 degrees centigrade I do not know the calculation <laughs> for uh, what that is in Fahrenheit, but I will I will put it in the notes below and so you can see, and we're gonna let that warm up. We're gonna do it for a 15 second press. Now, since we are using Flock, I'm gonna grab a shirt, get it prepped up here. Since we are using Flock, Flock does not shrink like HTV does. So with that said, we will be able to go ahead and do a full press on this flock. And then um, I'm gonna pull it down because I can't reach up there too well, okay. Um, we're gonna do a full press on the flock and then uh, do a full press even on the layer because we're not in a fear of uh, shrinkage like we would be with uh, Smooth or Sports Flex or Electric. HTV. If those were, if this design was done in um, those smooth vinyl HTVs, we would actually do a tack press, which is a quick three to four second press, 
before we did the other layer. But we won't have to do that in this case because this because the flock doesn't have the shrinking problem um, that the regular HTV does. That's one of the reasons I really like using the flock. And the other reason I really like using the flock is uh, the feel of the flock. The sizer uh, flock feels really nice on the shirt. Uh, as you guys probably know, we're here in Singapore and um, it can get very hot. One thing with uh, HTV shirts is that um, you will sweat around the HTV, especially the vinyl one. The flock tends to be a little bit more forgiving for that because it's a little bit more like fabric. So um, that's why I like to use, to use that as well. So when people talk about their preferences in doing t-shirts, here is where you'll say, yeah, I kind of like sublimation over flock. I mean, sorry, sublimation over HTV because it's lighter on the shirt, which is actually true. But the problem I have with sublimation is, is you have to use a polyester shirt or a poly blend with a high poly count. And I don't know if you guys have ever done sublimation. I really, and it's a personal thing, I just don't like the feel of the shirts, and especially after you've worn them once or twice they start to knot up, get really, those little lint balls on them, they get real itchy. Um, I made an effort to do some sublimation, but just decided for myself and my personal, they, they make beautiful shirts when they first come out, but for one, two, three wears of the shirt, did not like it really for myself. So I just kind of uh, went away from, from sublimation. So we'll get into what we are doing today, which is this Flock HTV vinyl. We're gonna start with our shirt. We're gonna put our um, Teflon paper over top of it, because what we wanna do is just give a good press onto the um, the heating area. I mean, uh, the shirt area, the, the shirt area we're gonna press. What we're doing is, is we're getting it ultra flat and we're getting it ultra dry. We're taking out all any moisture that was actually be in it there. I need to push my table just a bit. Sorry if there's any movement. Okay. And so when I do that, I usually take my cooling block and I want to cool down the HTV. And you can you want it to be cool to the touch. That's why this is appropriate name of cool touch because you want it to be cool to the touch. It doesn't have to be cold, uh, but what you want to do is get it cool. And why you want it to be cool? even from your first press that nothing is down on there is because you these HTVs, all of them, have heat activated glue on the back. And so if the shirt is very hot when you lay that first one down, if you lay it down and you're trying to move it, you can leave residue, you could lose the adhesiveness of the shirt. You don't want that heat to be activated. You don't need it to be iceberg cold, or even if it's just a tiny bit warm to the touch, it's fine. But that really hot, when you got a really hot shirt, you definitely want to cool that temperature down in any sake before you put the HTV on. Um, again, also with regular vinyl, cooling it down as quick as you can helps to prep it for the other layer and it helps to stop with the shrinkage. So, we've got a nice press shirt, got all the moisture out, we're gonna go ahead and take our Maximus here. We just line it up to the shirt, make it fit around the ring neck of the shirt, roughly, because, and then make sure it's even up here. What we're doing with this though, this is a guide to make sure that once you lay it down, you know that I'm very close. Nothing is laser beam and exactly, you know, micro, uh, you know, CERN laboratory <laughs> close. At this point, you're just making t-shirts. But what you, what you do want to do is make sure, of course, you're not like this, which you can see very easily, or you're not like this. And what the problem that's hard to see without this is when the graphic drifts this way or this way. It's, you've got it so it's not catacornered but it's drifting this way and this way. And that's what this does. This helps you, and I, I, why I actually created these is because I had that problem major, where I would take and I would drift this way or this way, and sometimes I would not notice until I put the shirt on, which is a quite embarrassing when you're walking around with a shirt with a logo that's sitting over here 
off to the side. And people are like, yeah, kind of what's going on with that. But I digress. So in this one, um, our Maximus, it's three inches from the top, from the bottom of the collar to the top of the uh, guide there. I, for me, think that's a little low. It's definitely low if you're doing anything under a 2X, but you can use it here for the 2X. But to actually make up for that, I can stick it up just a little bit so the graphic is a little bit up on it, but I'm kind of okay where it's at now. Because the worst thing, I got a little bit of lint here. You get rid of that. The worst thing you can ever have though is if your graphic is sitting down here in your belly. And if uh, if you are using a smaller size shirt at three inches, that's what's going to happen. This graphic is going to push you in your belly and you're going to have a big logo sticking in the middle of your stomach and you don't want that. For the larger shirts, which we're using the Maximus for, we're going to put it right here at the top, center it up well. Um, you can use the edges to actually, as a cheat sheet, to say, okay, I know this is a four inch box in here, and then you can actually put it at the four inch line. Another thing you could do is you could actually take your graphic, touch it, hit a fold line, and then just match up where that fold line, put your fold line right on your arrow and go with it that way. Either way you do it, you wanna do it like that. This line of your HTV at the top, if you cut a weed box around your whole thing, it can help you because what it's going to do is if that one's even and that's centered, you know your graphic is totally perfect. You don't have to do it that way, but it's just an extra bit of help that you can actually have with it. So I'm going to line it up, make sure it's straight, get that little fold in the middle and lay it down. And once I do that, the beautiful Maximus has done his job. He is out the way. For the with this design, he's out the way for the duration of the actual operation here. So from here, are we gonna go ahead, put our Teflon sheet over, we'll do a full press on that with the 15 seconds. Try not to move it underneath. I hope I did, didn't move underneath. Okay, and we're gonna cool this down just a little bit because this is a warm peel. The Teflon paper helps to, for the cool touch to slide over nice. If you slide it without it, sometimes these HTVs can get a little sticky on that part. So, so before I move any forward, real quickly, I just wanna say, if you wanted to skip the cooling process, didn't want to buy a, a cool touch or some other cooling block, you totally can do that. Just let the shirt cool on its own, about 15 to 20 minutes between that you wanna do in between layers. Uh, the, I guess the issue comes in is if you don't wanna wait to 15 to 20 minutes for a cold peel or a cool peel as this is, then you will need to do either a cooling block like this, or you can do as what uh, Sizer says, you can take and stick your shirt up against the wall, which is quite strange or not but you can do either way and both definitely work. So once you get it cool, you can feel it on this flock. It grabs back because it's a cold peel. So it's really, you really want to carefully pull this off of the, um, the shirt, keeping your hand to press it down and get it away from there. And that's why you wanna, you wanna really utilize the cooling method of either letting it cool down or to uh, using a cooling block to actually, uh, before you peel the, the, these, um, the flock um, HTV. Very sorry about that, stuttering all over the place. Um, as you can see, also the flock gives that kind of a 3D kind of raised feel effect to it. I really, really, really like it. Um, from here, we don't need a uh, t-shirt guide or anything because the guide is our actual graphic. So we can see our graphic underneath there. And the way we made this graphic, we can line it up within itself. carefully, not, and as you can see that, that fit very good because nothing shrank because this is flock HTV, which actually works well 
for not shrinking. So we're gonna go ahead and do another full press on this side. Uh, pressing a little bit, but you really don't need to press. This this easy press, if you're using an easy press, the easy press are very heavy. They add a much weight in their own. If you're using a regular uh, heat press, then of course, you know, you've got the pressure gauge on there and you can use that pressure gauge from there. So with the second layer, as you see, it's kind of, kind of sticky on that side. So, it's funny that different colors, even of the same HTV, will react differently. So this one, I'm gonna cool it down with the Teflon paper, just cause it's easier for me to glide my cooling block over it and around it, and I'm just feeling it, trying to cool it down pretty good to a nice touch so that when it's doing that fight back or that pull back that flock does, it's not pulling up the HTV. You wanna get this from now, this side, I'm gonna probably cool it a little bit more than the other side, cause these are the detail bits. And of course the detail bits have a more chance of pulling up than the bigger parts. Uh, that's one thing you do wanna, you wanna take into consideration your design when you're doing these. So when you've got a lot of little detailed parts, the one, the one, little stars here and there, these are the things that can pull up very easily. So you really wanna make sure if it's a cold pill at that point, you are really giving it a, a good cold pill. One thing I want to show you too is that, as you can see, the, the extra dirtiness it looks like that's on there does not come up, does not come up with it. So, we will pull it off from here. Go in slow and carefully as not to pull up any of our leathers or anything at that point. Some pieces fight back more than others. Pull it to the side here, and then we get it off from there, and we'll wave it off. And then we're gonna do one last press right after that. So I wanted to do a real quick edit, sorry about that, but there's a, a key information that I, I left out that I wanted to go back to and show you before I do the final press. Um, as you notice um, that this flock is layerable. So these elements here, are actually layered on another piece of flock. And you could do that quite well. It feels very smooth and very natural. Now, to say that, if you had a big layering project that had big pieces of flock laid on flock, you can do it. I would not suggest you do it because it would get very heavy on the shirt. But for small pieces where you don't want to line up things and you want them just to lay in there, you can layer sizer flock on or Caesar or Sizer flock on top of itself. So I wanted to get that in. I think that's a very important point. So quickly, we will move on to the final press here. And I just do a final press on the shirt just to ensure everything is heated up. I heat all the um, glue underneath it up at one time and get a good press on it down all together at once to make sure it's pressed all once and even and then I take it off and then I even, I cool that down because basically I want that to just lock into place and actually cool it down pretty quickly while it's still hot and gooey on the shirt. And I don't need to do a complete cool down on it. And you get the final Starfleet flock shirt. This one I actually made for myself. And so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to bring you to the hand cam so you can get a quick final look at this as close as I can bring you up to it. Okay, this is a shirt. Um, we're going to zoom into it as close as we can. I'm holding the camera in my hand so if it's a little bit shaky. But there you can see the flock. And you see how it sort of raises up off the shirt. 
I really like this flock. I really like how this came out. Very nice. Here you can particularly see where it's flock, layered on flock. And you can see, I'll try to get it on the side here. It is flat as flat can be. It looks great on the individual letters, especially when you get on smaller letters down here, how it raises up off the shirt. And I think that came out particularly nice. So if you look at the bottom in our show notes, you can see um, you want to ask questions. Of course, you can ask questions here, but it's probably best if you go down into the description and see where we have our Facebook group. We encourage you to come and, and join us on our Facebook group. And if you wanted to purchase any of the items that you saw here that are of Hestai products, like the Maximus or the Cool Touch, um, that will also be linked down there. I believe everybody knows where to pick up Easy Press and Sizer Vinyl where they can get it. Thanks so much for walking, watching and I hope you enjoyed our first uh, kind of tutorial for the year. Thanks.